This is Lecture 17, The Coast Range and Continental Margin. The lecture material primarily comes from the Oregon geology by Oren Orr. Moderately high mountains, terraces, rocky headlands, sandy beaches, and offshore shelf and slope all contribute to the province's varied landscape. Because of the marine influence, the province has the warmest average winter temperature, the coolest average summer temperatures, and the greatest precipitation of all the provinces of Oregon. The highest elevation is Mary's Peak at 4,097 feet. Only two rivers, the Columbia and the Umpqua, cut entirely across the province. Along the shores, abrupt headlands are punctuated by bays, estuaries, pocket beaches, dunes, and spits. This is a, an overview of the chapter one. Coastal Oregon had its beginning during Pale Eocene with the construction of seamounts, the Silesia terrain, along a spreading center between plates. Two, during early Eocene, Silesia rotated in a clockwise direction and shifted northward. Three, also during Eocene, the subsiding coast range slab, Silesia, in the Four Arc Basin west of the Cascade Volcanic Arc accumulated thick sequences of fluvial muds, sands, and volcanic detritus derived from the Klamath Mountains and western Idaho. 4. The edge of North American Plate was folded, elevated, and tilted by subduction, and Columbia River basalts invaded softer coastal muds during Miocene. Number 5. Continued uplift and falling sea levels due to Pleistocene glaciation constructed raised terraces along the coast. 6. The offshore slope is deformed by thrust faults and folds caused by subduction that parallel the coast. And 7. Today the coastal topography is in a constant state of flux due to uplift, landslides, wave, and erosion. By the early Cenozoic, 55 million years ago, the Pacific Northwest had begun to approximate its present geographic configuration. The coastline, coastline ran from just north of the Klamath Mountains, arcing inland to present-day city of John Day, then continuing arcing into Washington to just east of Vancouver Island in Canada. So for today's lecture, I'm going to tell the story about the formation and emplacement of the Silesia terrain upon the last remnant of the Farallon marine plate, beginning in late Pale Eocene and completing its docking and rotation to its present position by the end of Eocene. The rock of the Silesia terrain formed the basement rock beneath the coast range, the Willamette Valley, and the Western Cascades. We will discuss the deposition of the Taiyi Formation from sediments derived from the Klamath Mountains in Idaho into a four arc basin within, the, within that embayment, the deposition and draping of the Yamhill Formation on top of the Taiyi Formation, the volcanism of the Yahats and Cascade Head basalts on the seaward margin of the four arc basin, and finally the deposition of the Nest Tucka Formation in its protected basins between the Yahats basalts and the Taiyi formation in late Eocene. Two hypotheses prevail for the formation of Silesia that underlay the coast range in Willamette Valley, or that they began as either ocean crust in the volcanic archipelago some distance offshore, or from eruptions close to the continental margin. Hypothesis A states that multiple eruptions built seamounts and, and, volcanic and a volcanic plateau that were carried by the Farallon Plate to collide with and accrete to North America. Following accretion, the old subduction trench was abandoned and the Cascadia subduction was re-established 90 to 110 miles offshore west of the coastline. Hypothesis B is simpler and was created in place with rifting and extension along a Mesozoic continental margin and along the Farallon Plate and the Kula Plate. 
In support of this hypothesis, there is evidence that the erupted submarine basalts interfinger with locally derived sediments from the continental landmass. At this time, the preponderance of evidence supports the Model A hypothesis. About 60 million years ago, a chain of volcanic islands and plateau named Celestia carried atop the Farallon Plate were accreted onto North America at the red dashed line shown in this illustration. After docking, paleomagnetism indicates that the terrain rotated 35 degrees into its present position and subsided into a marine four arc trough west of the emerging western Cascades. The Celestia basement rocks average about 15 miles thick underneath the Oregon Coast Range. Note that the Blue Mountains rotated about 60 degrees from their location along the continental margin located along the western border of Idaho to their present position. In this model, the eastern portion of the Klamath Mountains slid along the KMBL liniment prior to the docking of the Celestia terrain. The coast range was uplifted by the oblique collision of the Juan de Fuca plate with North America that also yielded moderate rotation and faulting. The coast range block rotated clockwise with the stretching and widening in the basin and range and from compression of rocks in southwest Washington. Magnetometer readings have shown that the coast range has rotated 51 degrees since Eocene for an average of 1.5 degrees rotation per 1 million years. The clockwise rotation was generated by oblique plate subduction, extension, and dextral shear, with dextral shear accounting for 40% of the movement and extension for 60% of the movement. Folding and faulting of the province is an integral part of plate accretion. Structurally, the coast range is a pair of large inline crustal folds with a north-south axis, with the Nihalem Arch in the north and the Elkton Syncline in the south. Uplift of the coast range in the Cenozoic brought diminishing marine sediments and increasing terrestrial deposits. In a broad view, the western coastal margin is rising, while the eastern border and the Willamette Valley are either subsiding or are only minimally elevated. The coast range is further subdivided into several smaller microplates. To the north, the Oregon coast block, labeled OCB in the illustration, moves northward within the hanging wall of the Cascadia subduction zone above the obliquely converging Juan de Fuca plate. Analysis of GPS velocity data indicates that relative motion between the rigid Sierra, the Sierra Nevada Central Valley microplate, and the Oregon Coast Block microplate is characterized by several millimeters per year of dextral shear directed about north 70 degrees west, which is distinct from and counterclockwise to macroscopic dextral shear in the Walker Lane east of the Sierra microplate. The Sierra microplate, which comprises much of central California, is bounded on the west by the Pacific plate and moves about 11 to 13 millimeters per year northwest with respect to the stable North American plate. This map illustrates the apparent rate of uplift along the Pacific coast expressed in millimeters per year. The north-south discrepancy in numbers are a function of interseismic strain accumulating along the subduction boundary between the two plates. The north or south areas are, are active while the Newport area is static. It leads one to assume that when the large earthquake occurs, it will happen at the subduction zone opposite Cape Blanco. Throughout the coast range, Cenozoic volcanism and intrusions in place many of today's rugged mountains and headlands. Pale Eocene saw the arrival of the Celestia terrain. 
the Silesia terrain has been divided into two volcanic formations, the Metchosin in Washington and Vancouver, and the Silets River volcanics in Oregon. Eocene to Oligocene dikes and sills of the Tillamook volcanics, the basalts of the Cascade Head, and the Yahas basalts are older than the Miocene Columbia River lavas that flowed to the coast. This slide shows the stratigraphy of the Oregon Coast Range. We will concentrate on the stratigraphy of Newport and the Central Oregon Coast. We will discuss the stratigraphy of the following formations, the Siletz River Volcanics, the Tai Formation, the Yam Hill Formation, the Yahats Basalts, and the Pinna Contemporaneous Nestucca Formation, the Alsea Formation, the Uquina Formation, the Nye Formation, the Astoria Formation, and the Columbia River Basalts. Renewed subsidence 50 million years ago pushed the Eocene Seaway from Cape Blanco northward beyond Newport and brought an influx of characteristic Tai sandstone and mudstone. Sediments of the middle to late Eocene Bateman Caledo deltaic complex brought by inland streams were limited to the southwestern Four Arc region near Coos Bay. 2,500 feet of dark Elkton derived from the emerging western Cascade Range and north, northern Klamath Mountains entombed an upper slope fauna of mollusks and microfossils. Along the central coast, the Yamhill Formation dis disconformably overlies the Tai E Formation. The Yamhill Formation crops out near McMinnville in Yamhill County consists of silts, sands, muds, and volcanic ash that represent deeper offshore deposits. Inset within the formation are the Buell and Ricreol limestone lenses that inhabit, inhabited the fringes of seamounts and volcanic islands. The Yahats basalts nonconformably overlies the Yam Hill formation. The Yahats basalt has been interpreted as horizontal submarine flows of basalts erupted from volcanoes lining a shallow coastal shelf. This basalt forms the promontories at Sea Lion Caves, Hasita Head, and Cape Perpetua. Climate changes from the Middle Eocene and into Oligocene triggered two episodes of extinction when warm water fauna was replaced by temperate fauna during late Eocene and later when cool water fauna of the Oligocene replaced the Eocene temperate fauna. The geomorphology of the coast range and continental margin province at the end of Eocene to early Oligocene, a shallow tropical ocean occupied the Willamette Valley and the present coast range before the tropical climate was replaced by cooler climatic conditions of later Oligocene. Due to the cooling shift in climate and the oceans retreating northward out of the valley, locally 60% of the plants and 32% of marine invertebrates went extinct. The short-lived Oligocene epoch from 33.7 million to 23.8 million years ago, marine sedimentation was limited to embayments along the central and north coast. The Alsea Formation is a massive to thick bedded tufaceous marine siltstone and fine grained sandstone, locally concretionary. The Aquina Formation is a thick to thin bedded sandstone, glauconitic sandstone, conglomerate and tufaceous siltstone of deltaic origin. The tufaceous siltstone contains thin coal and ash beds. The sandstones are fine to coarse grained and fossiliferous. They are commonly cross bedded, as seen in this photograph, and forset bedded, and have scour and fill structures. Both the conglomerates and sandstone contain, contain abundant class of pumice and dacite derived from the western Cascade Mountains. Notice the cross bedding of the, of the coarse sandstone in this section of the formation. The Aquinnah Formation sedimentary material was derived from the underlying Tai Formation 
and Eocene Silitz, Silitz River volcanics, as well as ash and pumice from the ongoing Western Cascade eruptions. The late Oligocene to early Miocene Nye formation crop out further to the west and are found along the shoreline from Nye Beach and Agate Beach to Yaquinta Head. The Nye formation is a dark olive gray, organic rich marine mudstone and siltstone that contains sandy siltstone and very fine grained sandstone in the upper and lower sections. Dolomitic and calcareous concretions up to one half meter in size and lenticular beds are found locally. North of Yaquinta bed, you will find thick interbeds of very fine-grained micaceous, micaceous, carbonaceous, or cosic sandstone. The general coarsening upward sequence as seen in this photograph indicate a regressive sequence and fall in sea level. This outcrop of the Nye Formation is found at the Viet Vietnam Veterans Memorial at Nye Beach. By Miocene time, marine sedimentation was confined to areas close to the present-day shoreline. Note the deposition of the Nye Deep marine silts and the Astoria shelf sands within the Newport embayment. The Yaquinta deltaic sediments underlay, underlay both the Nye silts and the Astoria sands. Note the Columbia River basalts were flowing down the then existing Columbia River and would eventually invade the Newport embayment forming the headland features that bracket today's Moolock and Beverly Beach. <music>